Most of this information comes from the Tax Guide for Small Business for Individuals Who Use Schedule C, Publication 334, Tax Year 2022. You can find on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Looking at the income tax formula, we're focused on line one, income. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula is, in essence, an income statement, but just an outline. Other forms and schedules flowing into these line items, one of those, the Schedule C, having business income minus business expenses, the business net income, in essence, flowing in from Schedule C to line one, income of the income tax formula. The first page of the 1040, noting that the Schedule C flows into the Schedule 1, which flows into the first page of the Form 1040, line number 8. The Schedule C, profit or loss from business, is formatted in an income statement format. Income minus expenses. We're focused on the expenses here, more specifically on those related to legal and professional fees. So, legal and professional fees. Legal and professional fees, such as fees charged by accountants that are ordinary and necessary expenses directly related to the operating your business are deductible on Schedule C. So that is great. Make sure to pay your accountant well then, since you get to deduct the legal and professionals. Obviously, that makes sense because if the legal and professional work was for the purpose of your business, you would expect them to be ordinary and necessary and something to be deductible. Obviously, it gets a little bit more confusing if your accountant is also doing professional work, possibly doing your taxes and helping you with that as well, which could have a personal component to it as opposed to simply a legal component in that case. And when you're talking about legal expenses, oftentimes we're thinking lawyers uh, in that situation, the question would be, are you paying them for business related items or are you paying them for some kind of personal related item to see whether it would be deductible as a business expense? So, however, you usually cannot deduct legal fees you pay to acquire business assets. So add them to the basis of the property. So you might think, well, wait a second, that's still a business item that I bought business assets. So let's say you bought a building or something uh, like that. Then really what, what's happening here is if you had to pay the, the lawyer or something to, to, to go through the purchasing process or the professional to go through the purchasing process, then uh, do you get to expense it? Or you do, do you have to include it into the asset of the, of the building and possibly get the benefit from the expense by depreciating the asset if it's a depreciable asset as opposed to land which isn't depreciable. So that would be the, the item there. So, right? so the question is, do you have to capitalize it as something that's a fixed asset and then possibly depreciate it? We would rather not have to do that usually from a tax standpoint because as we saw when we looked at depreciation, the general rule is that we would like to get the expense as early as possible, usually uh, for taxes. So there's that situation. If the fees include payments for work of a personal nature, such as making a will, you can take a business deduction only for the part of the fee related to your business. So now you're paying for something that might have some link to your business, in which case you have something that's once again personal and business. That's often where the fuzzy problem areas come in with taxes. We have something that we can't neatly split up between business and personal and typically have to find some method to break out the business versus personal portion of something we're paying in order to deduct the business ordinary and necessary part.